So this third and final note is on the passé composé using être. The last two notes were the passé composé using avoir. So we saw the regular verbs, er verbs, ir verbs, and re verbs that had a nice little pattern. They used avoir. Then we saw the lengthy note on irregular past participles. All of those used avoir as well. This group of verbs, and it's really not that long if you think about it, these ones use être. And there's a nice little acronym that will help you remember in the bold red. It's Dr. Mrs. Vandertramp. And I've added another P because this last verb passé does sometimes use être. So uh, it's good to have that one in there as well. And you should know these. You should remember these. This way, if you're ever faced with a verb that you need to put into the past tense and you're trying to decide between avoir or être, those are your only two possibilities. Whenever you speak in the past or write in the past tense, you need either avoir or être. If you know this list and the verb that you're looking at or that you want to put in the past is not on this list, then you know it has to be avoir. There are thousands of verbs in the French language and most of them do use avoir. So this is relatively small considering how many other verbs take avoir. In the blue, you have the meaning in English. And then here in the green, you have the past participles. The good news is that most of these past participles are regular. The majority of these verbs are ER verbs. Okay, so they will have that nice regular E with the accent. Okay, E accent aigu ending. Let's go through them quickly. So, doctor, the devenir, and the revenir are um, two verbs that have prefixes, the DE and the RE. And the verb I have underlined here is venir. We have venir further down. It starts off the van der tramp. Some teachers, when they teach passé composé with être, they leave the DR off and they just do Mrs. van der tramp. They do that because they can. These two verbs are pretty much the same as venir. They are. They've got the verb venir right in there. I like to put them in there. They're not, um, it's not going to be that much more challenging to have the doctor in there. So devenir, revenir, and venir. They have an irregular past participle because as you can see, they end with an IR. Had they been regular, it would be an I ending, just like finir and choisir. Instead, it's a U ending, so that is irregular. But really, you're learning three verbs for the price of one. You know that venir is venu, so it's devenu and revenu. Then we go on with the misses part. We have monte, nice regular ER ending, so we have an E accent aigu. Same with reste, reste. Sortir, nice regular IR verb, sorti. We already saw venir, so we'll keep going. Aller, nice regular ER ending. Okay, aller is not a regular verb yet. The past participle is regular. Aller. Naître is our next irregular past participle. It's naître, né. So completely different. It doesn't follow a pattern. So that's our fourth irregular if you count devenir and revenir. Then we have descendre. Regular ends with an R E, so it's a U. Entre ends with an E R, so it's an E accent aigu. Rentre, they look very similar. In fact, rentre is entre, just with an R in front of it, meaning to re enter or to come back home, to go back to school, to come back to something. Tombe, regular once again. Tombe, retourne, E R once again. Arrive, arrive. Mourir is our fifth and final irregular one. And it kind of goes with netre, if you think about it. Netre means to be born, and it's ne, it's irregular. Murir means to die, so they're opposites. And it is irregular, mar. It has an IR ending, but it is not a regular IR verb. Partir is, instead, it's an IR verb, so parti, and passe is passe. Here at the bottom, I have conjugated one verb, aller, and this is where the 
être verbs are very different from the avoir verbs. They have something called agreement or accord in French. If I were writing an email to someone telling them where I went, using the verb aller, because it means to go, so in the past it would be I went, I would have to put an E at the end of my past participle because I'm a girl. So je suis allé, I would write it without the brackets. So I'm going to take those off for a moment. And that's exactly how my word would appear. Okay. And in fact, I'm even going to take out the red and just show you that if I were writing an email to someone, it would be like this. Je suis allé. I need that E next to that E accent aigu. And agreement will go on all of these. It doesn't matter what it ends with. So if I had to put an E at the end of descendu, I would do that. Okay. If I had to put an E here, I would do that. An E here, okay, etc. Okay. It does not matter what it ends with. You will add an ending if you need to. So je suis allé, the reason why it was in brackets is because perhaps it's a boy writing. And he would just write it like that. Je suis allé with nothing. Same with tu es allé. If I am writing to my son an email, a text, I would write tu es allé. If I were writing to my daughter, it would be like this. Tu es allé with an E. On to the il est allé. As you can see, nothing is there. Nothing in brackets. It's a boy. We add nothing. We have no possibility of adding anything. For elle est allé, we must add an E. Not in brackets. No, nothing is possible or not possible. No, we have to add that E there because elle is a female. So elle est allé. Nous sommes allé. We must have the S because nous sommes allé. That is plural means we. So we has to be more than one. So we will always have the S. It may or may not have an E. If I am talking or I'm writing and I am writing about me and my girlfriends, we went out last night, obviously not in these times, but in other times, then I would have to have an ES. I would put no bracket. It would be an ES attached to the LA. Vous êtes allé can appear exactly the way it is. Even though vous is almost always plural, vous is also used to be polite. So if I were writing an email to Mr. Daly and I'm being polite, I would write vous êtes allé and it would be like this with nothing at the end because he is a man. If I instead were writing to Miss Toth, I would then add this E because I'm being polite saying vous. Okay, let's get rid of that S. And so that's what it would look like if I were writing to Mrs. Toth. Or if you were writing me an email, you would say, Madame Percy, comma, vous êtes allé, or vous êtes parti, or vous êtes passé, or vous êtes arrivé, any of these, and you would have to add an E. An S would be used when I'm speaking to all of you. I would say, vous êtes allé. And I would just use an S, nothing else, because you're mixed, you're boys, you're girls. It's general. So it would look like that. Vous êtes allé. Okay? But I'm just going to put the brackets back in because these are possibilities. It's depending on who we are speaking to, who is doing the speaking. So I'm going to leave those brackets in. No brackets down here. No other possibilities but this. Ils sont allés. These are boys or boys and girls, mixed company, general. So we're going to have an S no matter what. And it will always be like that. Okay? And El Sontale will always be ES. No brackets. It has to be ES. Okay? So you can play this video again and go through it. Um, you should memorize these. These are important to know.